Welcome back to the PI Planning Cooking Show. This episode, we will talk about Team Cadence. Welcome to the PI Planning Cooking Show with Shane Harrison. This is pretty much a universal thing. Everybody pretty much knows what it is or has an idea. I want to talk a little bit about it because we need to be on the same page. So the first thing I want to talk about is the pre-iteration. So you've done PI planning and now you want to go into your first iteration. What has to happen between PI planning and the first iteration? A key part of that is the state of the stories as you exit PI planning. Normally, and this may not be the case for you, but normally your stories aren't fully fleshed out. You haven't got all the questions answered. You don't necessarily have all the acceptance criteria in there. Maybe the full description of the story is, is, is not there, or some research that needs to be done. All of those things have to happen for at least the stories in your first iteration before the first iteration starts. Not after or not during because the first iteration should be a normal scrum iteration. That means when the team goes into iteration planning, the stories are fully developed and ready to go. It doesn't mean there's lots of gaps because we just had PI planning. It means that we have spent the time between PI planning and the first iteration to get ready. A lot of arts that I work with forget that. And so the first iteration is a big mess as they're trying to play catch up by trying to execute and commit against draft stories where they're not sure they can really go against them. So make sure your pre-iteration one work is done. Make sure your preparation for that is scheduled in a way that you have enough time between the end of PI planning and your first iteration. So let's talk about a normal iteration cadence. The normal iteration cadence for a team, as always, starts with what you would know, and that, of course, is the iteration planning. The very first thing you do, you know, I don't know what the timing is that you allow for yours, but it's somewhere between two and four hours. You should be exiting with an iteration plan, whether you do task breakdown or not, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, you should exit with a plan, and you should exit with a commitment from the team to meet that plan, a commitment to meet the iteration goals. And one of the things that's really helpful for teams to, to write better iteration goals, just like it's better for teams and PI planning to, to do a breakdown, is to do a breakdown of the stories. If we want a swarm, if we want all the team members to work on the highest priority story, we need to be able to swarm. And to swarm, we need to actually break down what that story is into its component parts, and we have to have to an understanding within the team who's gonna work on what. I'm not saying you have to do task breakdown because there's plenty of situations I've been where it's not necessary where the team is able to do it. But what I am saying is be aware of the situation that you're in and use task breakdown when it's necessary. There is no religious decision about task breakdown good or task breakdown bad. One of the worst things you can do is decide universally that task breakdown is bad and end up in a situation where you've got say six people in a team, one person per story. So let's see, we've got five people working on the story on, or on a story that is not the highest priority. What on earth are the people working on priorities four, five and six doing when priority one is not finished? That is not working to priorities. That is not working to value. If you're ending up doing that, you should look at doing task breakdown until a point where teams are, the team is able to do the highest priority story in a swarming function or the highest one or two in a swarming function without task breakdown. It makes a huge difference to performance and it'll make a big difference to the value you create and it makes sure you finish the most important things first rather than start a large number of things at once. So we've talked about iteration planning. You've walked out of your iteration planning and what do you have? You have a great plan. So what do we need to do with that plan? Well, we've committed to it. We know what it is. Now we have to execute. And what's the first thing that a team does in execution? I'm sure you're all familiar with it, daily stand-up. 
those happen every day I don't need to go into the details of what they are but it's really important that the daily stand-up is a collaboration between the team members talking about what they're doing you know what is going well what is not going so well what are they working on what are they going to work on next what have they finished and the team should be discussing amongst themselves whether each other is blocked your scrum master may have to call those things out and your PO should be relatively silent unless they're called upon but what we want to be is an estate where the team is having the dialogue where the team is having the conversation where the team is calling out the situations or the issues and handing those issues off to the scrum master to solve or to manage but we're the team, this is supposed to be a team event and we have to stay focused on that. The next thing we do, we have a refinement session. I normally run two refinements per iteration. I run an, an early refinement, which is really focused on the plus one, the very next iteration after this. The reason I focus on that one is because there are often questions that need to be answered outside the group so you go into a refinement with the team and we're looking at those stories and we're making sure we understand the stories and the team will be working in the session actively with the PO probably changing and improving the stories writing acceptance criteria adding detail identifying questions and it may be a question for architecture or the system team or product management or the business the reason you need this early refinement is you want those things to be extracted from the stories you're about to work on and taken away and handled. If you don't do that, how's your planning going to be? If you, These questions are real, they're not for fun, so you're going to need to get those done. Then life moves on. So you hit the middle of the iteration and in the middle of the iteration what I normally do is I would run a meet after. For those of you who are not familiar with a meet after, a meet after is something that may be 15 minutes to half an hour or I've even seen longer ones where you have a session deliberately after the daily stand-up that is supposed to be focused on special topics. So like maybe an issue comes up in the daily stand-up, you put it aside and the two people who need to talk about it, well four in this case, um, will meet and have a discussion. If other people want to join, if the PO wants to join, if the scrum master wants to join, they can join, but it's all optional. But in the middle of the iteration, I run a deliberate, non-optional meet after, which is the mid-iteration review. So we can step back from the issues of the day in the daily stand-up, and we can look at the whole of the iteration and look at where we are in this timeline. So we're about the middle, maybe we're four days in, where are we on our burn downs? Where are we on our cumulative flow diagrams? Where are we on our defect fixing or support capacity reservations? Where, where are we there? And where are we in terms of the stories we're working on? Are we approximately in the middle? Have we got more or less half the work done? Or do we have a problem? Are we looking at the end of an iteration where we know we're gonna to have to push stuff out? If we think things are going to be pushed out, if we think things can't be fixed, if we think we're going to need more capacity for support, if we think we need more capacity for um, defect fixing, this is a time to talk about it and we need to make changes to the scope of the iteration then. Oh no, we can't change the scope of the iteration after commitment. Yes, you can. It's just if we grow the capacity for support, we need to push something else out. So we don't replan but we make a change. And it's better that we communicate that change to the PO now to say, you know, these last three stories that we had committed to and we thought we were going to do, but because of the higher load and defects, the higher load and support, we're gonna to have to push those over the side. Now, if I'm a PO, if you can tell me in the middle of the iteration, that is a million times better than you telling me on the last day in the review because then I've got to try and work out, do I want it in the next iteration? Because it is optional. Or do I push it further down the PI? Or do I push it out of the PI completely? Yes, it is a very, very bad habit to just push things from one iteration to the next. You should have a conscious decision on whether you want to do that or not. So we've done our mid, mid iteration review in the meetup so we're not really using excessive time to do that and we're running along through our iteration doing our daily stand-ups and then we would normally hit 
another refinement. This refinement is different from the other. The first refinement, we're looking at the next iteration. What are we going to do in the next iteration? Making sure we understand the questions that we have that need to be answered before we start the next iteration. The second refinement, I know imaginatively called refinement two, in this refinement, we're focusing on reviewing the questions that we had to make sure they're answered about the stories for the next iteration. But then we're looking at what are the big ticket items for the iteration after that and the one after that. So now we're looking further down the pipeline, trying to spot, let's, we could say, we're, we're looking across the sea, the sea of stories that we have, and we're looking for the rocks. And we wanna make sure that we have handled those rocks, that we can steer around them or get those big questions answered before we hit there. And that's the focus of refinement two. So refinement two, we nail what's needed for the next iteration. And then we find the big rocks further down and we have a discussion about that. Sometimes you don't need your refinement too. Aren't you lucky? When you need it and you don't have it, then you'll be unlucky because you will hit that in the next planning. And then of course, you've got the classics. A demo and review. How did we go? Have we done what we expected to do? And in regards to the demo, you don't have to demo every story. You demo the stories that matter. But you do have to ensure that every story that is demoed has been accepted. And you also have to make sure that all the stories, whether demoed or not, that are said as done, are truly done. You don't have a definition of done for fun. So that's the demo and the retro. Retro is learning time. It's really a private time for the team to get together look at its performance, look at the performance of its process, look at its performance as a team. We're not looking at the product, we're looking at our process and we're trying to make our process better. That is key. How do we get better? How do we be better prepared for support calls because we found we needed twice as much capacity for support? Or how do we better project um, the problems that we're going to have with um, languages that we when we need translations from part of the language team how do we get better at preparing and getting ready for our plans let's say we only our plan versus actual was 84 percent where what is that gap and why that's really important then your iteration's done so you have three to five of those during a pi that's great so what else does the team have to deal with as they're going through the PI that's a bit exceptional? So most other functions like product management and RTEs have a lot of um, PI length, length activities going on, preparing, going, running through one PI and preparing for the next. Teams don't have so much of that. They have what I mentioned earlier, which is the pre-planning work, but they also have your mid-PI review. And in the mid-PI review, it's best that the team actually have a look at what's going to be presented from from their team before they go in that can be done as a meet after as well you don't need to take hours um, and mid, mid pi's reviews aren't that, that that long anyway and should include a fair amount of celebration or or crying you can cry or um, cheer into your champagne or beer it depends on how, on, on how you feel now we're getting ready for the end and what happens at the end? It's a signal for the teams to say socialization is about to begin. So as you move towards the end of the PI, there are some things that the teams are going to encounter that is different. One of the things is pressure will start to go up to finish those features, to meet those PI commitments. So that will create tension within the teams. Another thing that will start happening is socialization. Socialization of organizational change, socialization of features and things like that. And the reason I wanted to talk about that in a little bit more detail here is as you go through your second to last iteration, you can focus your second refinement session of the two you have in your iteration on the next PI, what are the features in the next PI? What are the organizational changes in the next PI? And you can use both of them in your last iteration to focus on that. So assuming your refinements are two hours each, that gives you six hours, which may or may not be a lot, of socialization you can do without impacting the team's ability to execute against their plan and meet their commitments. So as always, 
Click the subscribe button if you like what you see and want to see more. Click on the little bell if you want a reminder every time something comes out. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. We'll answer you as quick as you can. We are also interested in suggestions for what we should cover, topics we should cover. So please let us know what you're thinking. Let us know what's keeping you up at night, or at least causing you to itch in the wrong places. Have a great week. Talk to you next week. That's the PI Planning Cooking Show with Shane Harrison.